What's up, Buttercup? Welcome back to my channel. Today's book review is Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones. This book is classified as a horror novella, and I gave it four out of five stars. So let's just do the summary first and then go into the detail. The main character, Junior, his younger brother, who's very sick, and his mom left the reservation and they live in a rundown prefab house on the outskirts of the reservation. Junior's dad died years ago. He kind of remembers his dad, just I think everyone, if you've lost someone when you're younger, you remember certain things, but most things you, you don't. So you really hold on to the things that you can remember. And one night while Junior is sleepwalking, or maybe not, this is kind of like the thing, is he sleepwalking, is he not, what's going on here? He sees his dad in a spirit form in the hallway of this house. And for the rest of the book, he is obsessive over seeing his dad and kind of trying to figure out how to tell his mom so his mom believes that his dad is back. And how do we then bring back dad from being a ghost to being alive? Or if we can't do that, can we in some way incorporate ghost dad into our everyday life? And... Junior is in middle school, so I must note on Goodreads and on Amazon, it says that he's 15 years old. That's not accurate. And I don't know where that mess up came from, whoever read the summaries, apparently. But yeah, it says in the book he's in middle school. And I wanna check on the back here. Yeah, it says he's actually 15 years old. But it says in the novel that he's 12, 13, though I guess this could start out when he's 12 and in middle school and then go until 15, but that is absolutely not clear that that is how that works. So that's a little weird. I think there needs to be some clarification on Junior's age because that is actually a very important point in the novel that he's young, not like 15 years young, which is young, yeah. <laughs> All the adults are like, no, that's young. I get it. But young as in he's in middle school. Now he could have been held back, but that was not mentioned. And I say that is a, I would say a significant mess up with not being clear and stating in the beginning he's 12, 13 in middle school versus you see it on the the back of the book cover and the online summary say that he's 15 because this young boy has to grow up very, very fast. He's extremely stressed out because he is kind of taking care of his mother in some ways, but more so he's taking care of his very sick younger brother that is at a third grade level, maybe second grade level of reading and math and he's stuck there. He's way older than second and third grade age, but there are some mental and physical disabilities and learning disabilities as well. And his mom is working as much as she can as a single mom. And there are just times where she's not around and Junior is helping his brother out, including having to call emergency lines when he is having a seizure or you know something like that that's very very stressful and around this age even 15 i've seen uh well you see adults at times it's rare but you see adults sleepwalking but it's a bit more common when you're younger when you're at a certain stress level or very upset that you will sleepwalk when you're younger and so not only is he dealing with the present moment and having to take care of his younger brother and also in in ways his mom but he's also still dealing with the death of his father they left the reservation because his mom doesn't really say but 
let's just assume she just doesn't want to be in the place where her husband died and we can understand that also she does she doesn't mention junior mentions that the schools outside of the reservation are better and she really wants to try and get her youngest son as much help as he can and they're they're doing their best in the outer school that's not on the reservation but that's still a huge struggle even then and so he sleepwalks and he sees his dad he sees other things sometimes as well and as the reader we we're not sure there's no 100% certainty if it's actually a ghost or if junior is hallucinating which you do have when you sleepwalk some people not everyone and so he is through no fault of his own an unreliable narrator that does have to be mentioned he's unreliable because of his stress because of his sadness because of his frustration just everything going on that then results in sleepwalking and then is he seeing a ghost of his dad or is he hallucinating that's really up in the air and uh, I'm going to lean more on the side of that he isn't seeing an actual ghost very pushy on I'm I'm seeing a ghost it's not hallucination it's a, it's a ghost this time it's my dad's ghost this time there's a lot of emotion behind that of course there is of course there is because it's your dad and you want someone else in the house because you're the male figure and you're too young for that that's why i couldn't give it five stars i wanted a little bit more hint towards it's just a hallucination or it's just actually a ghost but Stephen really has it up in the air for the reader and it was going well until the end where it's very I don't even know the word it's very confusing a lot of mystery behind it even though the description was fairly good it's not the writing it's just that Stephen chose to go down the road of everything that he put into the last scene regarding junior and his dad or not his dad you can interpret that as not real or real <laughs> and so I do you know for whatever reason I don't know I do want it to be at least like have that there but maybe a hint or two where it's either ghost or hallucination that's just my personal preference though I know a lot of people are totally good with open-ended stories I guess I'm not one of them <laughs> also I think this is more of a paranormal focus of domestic family fiction than horror I think a lot of like horror now is turning away from ghosts and then it now it's classified like ghosts and spirits and ghouls and all that stuff is paranormal versus horror i don't remember when this was published so nowadays me reading an older book i know it's an older book older is <laughs> okay you get the point but i know that it's a bit older nowadays me getting into horror like the past only two years i can see the difference of ghosties girls as paranormal and horror is a bunch of other stuff and stephen writes horror but for like this one nowadays it would be technically classified as paranormal family fiction or family drama fiction and i think that would have been a little better for readers to comprehend because you're going into mapping the interior thinking it's going to be like his other horror novels and it's not it there are similarities of course because you know Stephen has his style and it's a great style but the story itself very very subdued and I don't know if you could 
technically classify it as horror because it's just it's just junior having to deal with you know everyday life that's very stressful and then he sleepwalks and then is it a ghost he's seen or is it just a hallucination that comes with sleepwalking you know depending on the person that's really what it's about he's really fighting with the stress of his everyday life in the present and then in the past the grief and just not knowing a lot of answers that he has to questions and no one's wanting to talk about it and no one's going to answer his questions and that's really hard for a child that's hard for an adult but really hard for a child especially since he lost his dad so early and he can't remember a lot of stuff about his dad other than if someone wants to talk about his dad which doesn't really happen a lot this book overall is about death grief poverty and how to and how not to handle your emotions as an adult and as a child because you can see how the adults handle things and it's not the best way <laughs> but then in other times it's a great way so it's just how do you live how do you work around death and grief and poverty and just how does that affect you or your child or your children or even like your family and your friends or your neighbors because it affects everyone you might think that it is very internal but grief is internal and external and it can it of course affects you but affects everyone else as well and and if death affects everyone because you can't outrun death you can see Stephen touching on these big points and shining a light to them and I really appreciated that he did a great job in that regard I definitely recommend this novella just go in to this book knowing that he's unreliable but it's not his fault and that it's a paranormal family drama not an a uh, horror ooh scary or even ooh spooky book and I think that will help you a bit more in understanding how the story goes about and probably would enjoy it a bit more i went into it thinking that it was horror oh no but i'm it's it's something else so that could also maybe have affected the rating i was you know teetering on four and five but i ultimately went with four it's a high four though, and like I said, I do recommend it. Thank you so much for watching my book review on mapping the interior, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Read, write, do whatever you want to do for self-care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!